right, we are at the point in our discussion of kinetics at Allen High School at the 10th grade level of using data to determine a rate law expression. Now, in your notes, there's a list of instructions, and I think they're very helpful reference. I'm not going to go through them one by one. I'm going to do them one by one. So let's take a look at the reaction we're given. It's not unusual to use A's and B's and C's for these just to make up experiments to help you understand the process of analyzing the data. Now, what we're going to start with is what we like to term the generic rate law expression. So RLE, rate law expression. So we know that the rate is going to be equal to the rate constant K. Now, it's possible that it depends on A, and it could be to the 0, 1, 2, 3. You're probably not going to see anything higher than that power. And it's also possible that it depends on B to some power, 0, 1, 2, or 3. And what our goal is as we solve this is to find K, X, and Y. But here's a problem. Right now, we have concentration of A, we have a concentration of B, we have a rate. We have three of the factors that are in this, but we also have three unknowns. And I don't know about you, but I cannot solve an equation with three unknowns, a single equation, and hope to get a single answer out of it. So that's what we want to do as we evaluate the data, is we want to streamline it somehow to eliminate some of the unknowns. Now, in any good experiment, you really only want one independent and one dependent variable. So we're gonna call our rate our dependent variable for this experiment. And we have two possible independent variables. A good experiment is going to want one of these to be the independent variable and the other to be control variable. And so whoever designed this experiment hopefully did that for us. And if we evaluate it, we do see that between trials one and two, A is independently manipulated and B is control because it's held constant. Now, that's true between two and three as well, and it's true between one and three. So we're going to compare two of these trials. We could do one to two, we could do one to three, or um, two to three. Any one of those work to find the order with respect to A. So we want A to be our independent variable. Now, I'm going to pick two and one, and let's go on to the next page and I'll show you what we do with these. So let's highlight that. We're going to do trials one and two, and our goal is to find the order with respect to A. So that's what we're doing right now. And so this is the data that we want to focus our attention on. We're going to take a ratio of those generic rate law expressions. Now, your mathematics is going to work out more obviously if you put the larger rate in the numerator. You don't have to, it doesn't matter, just take either ratio, but your math is much simpler. So I'm gonna put my larger rate, 1.865 times 10 to the minus third over 4.66 times 10 to the minus fourth, okay? Now, what we're going to have then is we're gonna put generic rate laws on the other side. So we're going to put K for the rate constant. We're going to put, remember the, the rate law was rate is equal to K times A to some power X times B to some power Y. So I'm going to put A, which is 0.1. Be careful, it's real easy to flip-flop, to some power times B to some power. So I simply substitute it into that generic rate law. Now I'm going to do the same thing using the data from trial one. Now if temperature didn't change, K didn't change, 
So I've got k times 0.05 to some power times 0.05 to b's power. Okay, so all I did is plugged in this data into generic rate laws and I took rate two, trial two, over trial one. Now, if you'll notice at this point, this cancels because we held it as a control variable. My k cancels. k cancels because we did this at a controlled temperature. So for this, both B and temperature were controlled. So now this narrows down to one equation and one unknown. And if we solve this, if we do this division, you get 4.002 times uh, is equal to 0.1 over 0.05 is 2 to the x. Now, hopefully, this is self-evident to you that 2 squared or that x is equal to 2 is equal to 4. Okay? If it's not, many of you are le learning right now that if you take the log of the left, the one without the power, so the log of 4.002 over the log of the number with the power, is equal to the power. Most of these should come out fairly obvious, but you can use logs to study if you need to. So now we know that it's second order with respect to A. So let's attack B now. We're going to do the same thing for B as we did, I'll come back and I'll use these later. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at two trials where this time what we want is B to vary and A to be held constant. Um, there's a variety of possibilities here. I'm going to pick trials four and five because A, you noticed, is held constant or controlled here and B varies. So I can zero in on the impact of B alone. So that's the goal. So we're going to take the ratio of those rate law expressions. I like to put the larger number on top. So 2.984 e to the minus 2. I have k. I have a to the 0.05. I now know that that's squared. That's not an unknown anymore. So I can go ahead and put that in there and 0.1 to the y. Now I'm going to do, whoops, did I do that? Look at how easy that is to shift your eyes. It's 0.05 and 0.2. All right, and then I'm gonna put it over four, 3.73 times 10 to the minus three is equal to k times 0.05. I know it's second order, I can put that in, times 0 0.10 to the y. Now we can cancel some of these and simplify our math. K's cancel because we didn't change temperature. Now, fortunately, A cancels. But if it didn't, no big deal because we know it's second order. We could have just done a little bit more algebra, right? If it didn't, if this didn't cancel, we could have done more algebra and then done some cross multiplying. But fortunately, it does cancel. And when we do this algebra, you get eight is equal to two to the X. Now, you know what you can do? Put in two to the zero, you'll get one. Two to the first, you'll get two. Two squared, you'll get four. You can do this trial and error by just plugging in values for x. Some of you see right away that x is three, so it's third order with respect to b. Or, if it's not obvious and you don't wanna do trial and error, two to the zero, two to the first, two to the second, two to the third, and keep doing that until you get the left-hand side. You can take the log of eight over the log of two, and that's going to equal, that should have been to the y, keep things consistent, that's gonna equal y. So now we have a temperature independent rate law. As long as we have not defined K, we can define the temperature independent rate law expression so it would be a squared b cubed, okay? So that is how we get our first 
uh, example here. They were coincidentally the stoichiometry. I think I'm going to get in there and change that, but that's not always true. You cannot take these from the stoichiometry. That was purely coincidence in the problem we stole from someplace. So just FYI, you have to get that two and this three from experiment. Now, we're going to continue this problem and see some more information we can get out, out of it in the next video. Until then, this is signing off.